Hello everybody, this is me, your old pal Chris, and I'm here in Brisbane, Australia, and because of our good friend, aka COVID-19, the coronavirus, etc, etc, I'm in self-imposed isolation here at home for the next 14 days. So I thought, what are 14 great things I can do uh, to entertain myself and you at the same time? And one of the things I had to do when I got home yesterday night was that there was two big boxes like this of treasure that had arrived. See, for those of you who don't know, one of my jobs that I do and businesses that I run is the Antique Guild here in Brisbane, Australia. And probably one of my favorite parts about being an antique dealer is that it is kind of like Christmas all the time. See, this box of antiques I actually bought in New Zealand about six, seven months ago and they're only now just arriving. So I don't even remember what's in the box, <laughs> let alone much else. That's what I mean, it's like a surprise, it's Christmas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the box and let you guys see first what's arrived. And if you want, I can tell you a little bit about each thing so that it's educational, it's interesting, and if anything tickles your fancy, you can of course always get in touch and I can tell you more um, and even let you buy it if you like, because none of this is to keep unless I really like it. So, big old dirty box just arrived. Thankfully, they obliged me and sent it home instead of to the shop because I explained that I can't be there for a while. Two weeks at home. What am I going to do? Polish the furniture, polish the silver, drive my husband crazy, irritate the cat. Those are all on the list. Okay, so what's more exciting than a big box? I know my cat's going to enjoy it later too. This particular lady, when she sends stuff, she always packs it like crazy. There's all sorts of things in here. Looks like so far she sent me a box of apples. Huh. Box in a box. Bananas from Mexico. Not likely. Let's see here. What have we got? Okay. Cat's already concerned, seeing all the debris and the trice. So, what's in packet number one? Boys and girls, I'm as excited as you are. I've got no idea, no earthly idea what could be in here. Knowing me though, and knowing the fabulous shop that I bought all this from, it's probably glass. She had amazing glass. You know, once upon a time, oh no. See, this one was actually a gift for the cameraman, my husband holding the, holding the camera and it is a piece of porcelain that he's gonna be as surprised as you to see it. Isn't it wonderful that I buy things half a year away and they only now just come to surface? Actually, in our shop, the Antique Guild in Brisbane, there's one lady who I've hired and one of the jobs that she has to do is chase up after all the stuff that I buy all over the world and then forget that I bought it. And she organizes making sure it gets to the store and gets home to us. So this is a weird and gnarly looking, see what I mean? She packs it like crazy. Some of you may have tuned out by now and some of you are probably dying with anticipation. What could be in the box? Now, some of you may think this is like a crazy idea to broadcast this kind of thing, but you know, some friends of mine have real little kids, like two, three-year-old kids, and they actually tune into YouTube and watch other kids opening up toys and presents. So that is a wild thing. It's actually a wall bracket. See, it mounts on the wall there. It's English porcelain from about 1870, made by the Royal Worcester Factory. And it's a beautiful turquoise glaze, sort of in a very Chinese style. And I'm sure first dibs goes to the man I bought it for, but who knows? He might get it off him if he decides to, uh, if he decides to let her go. I'll just leave that out on the counter for you. And off we go into the next package. What else we got here? 
See, that's good. He can he can show you what's going on with that one while I cut into the next package. You don't have to just watch me cut through tape and bubble wrap. I'm glad she packed it like this though. The last package we got from this same lady, she barely wrapped it at all. And a very, very rare French glass bowl by René Lalique. Very rare arrived absolutely in pieces and it was heartbreaking. See, pieces like that, that, that wall bracket that's 150 years old or maybe not quite that, 140. Um, to think it's lasted all that time and had such a great life and it to be in our hands that it gets destroyed is a little bit heartbreaking. You never want that to happen. So, this is a two-part ensemble. Should I open the, the base or the top first? Well, I'm going for the base. Oh, this is another piece of porcelain. Now this, boys and girls, is a lidded jar in the Viennese secessionist style. And secessionist style means that there was a group of artists like Gustav Klimt. If you've seen the movie, The Woman in Gold, Gustav Klimt was the painter, the subject of that. And they, they left or seceded from the establishment of artists and, and struck out in their own style that is like, got a little bit of Art Nouveau and a little bit of Art Deco and something very unique and specific to itself. Um, and at, at the moment, this very much speaks to my aesthetic. So, I wanted to grab this when I saw it. And I definitely know that I'm not keeping it. So if this tickles your fancy, it is available. And my, oh my, what a stunning thing. Oh my God. Hey, you have to pass me that camera. So I have to show you very briefly what the cat's doing. He's just at my feet here. And there he is in the, in the box of Mexican bananas. So back it goes and on to the next. Now let's see what could be in this wee box. Isn't that a glorious piece of porcelain? Mm -mm -mm. How old is this one? This one, as I say, it's uh, Austrian secessionist. I would date that probably at about 1910. Uh, Pre-World War, hmm, it could be in between World War I and World War II actually, based on that style. But I would say it's about, uh, 1910, just pre-Art Deco. Now there's two little things in this box and I wonder if it's a pair of something. So let's see what we got here. What have we got here? Like I say, it was long enough ago that I don't remember what it is that I bought until I start opening up all the packages. So, the unfortunate part of making such a mess opening things is because I'm quarantined, the housekeeper isn't coming for a few weeks, so we're going to have to clean all this up ourselves. She's definitely done a good job wrapping this time. Oh, this now I remember. This is glass, and there's actually five of these, if memory serves. And they are beautiful amethyst glass with a gold gilt frieze, that little band in the middle, of um, people riding chariots. Uh, and this is by the Moser factory of what at the time was Bohemia. They're not marked, but they was at the time Bohemia uh, and is now the Czech Republic. If you have been to Prague, you will know that the Moser store in Prague is absolutely stunning. And I won't go through all of them, but there are five of these in total. If anyone's interested in that, now I think, I think that's what those are, those five. And oh, there's something much bigger. Let's go for the big one down here. What's this then? Oh, 
what could be in here? You know, they're such delicate objects, I'm very glad that she packs them so well. And probably, I should have tried to be conservative and save some of this packaging. But, oh, there's a cat attacking me from the banana box. <laughs> he's, he's clawing through the, he's clawing through there. <laughs> Trying to get me. Ah, now I think I remember what this is. Let me guess it's a bowl. It is a bowl. Can you guess what it's made out of? It is the most beautiful and filthy. This has not been cleaned, I don't think, since it was made in France in the 1920s. This is a large Art Deco opalescent glass bowl produced by a factory. Actually, hmm, I, I, I'm wrong. It's made for the shop in Paris called Etling. Um, and there is a maker's mark on the back, so let's see. Uh, oh, I'm incorrect. It's not Etling. It's, it's marked P. D. Avacin, made in France. Pierre d'Avacin was his name, and he was actually one of the French glass designers who made a great deal of pieces for the French glass factory Lalique. He was a glass designer uh, who left Lalique and forged out on his own. And this shows how naughty I am. I bought this without turning it over and looking at the stamp. I just listened to the lady selling it to me and believed her. But I thought it was so beautiful an object that it didn't much matter. Now, what else have we got in the box? Do you know what? I think that's all that's in this box. But of these packages, there was meant to be five of those amethyst glass pieces. And is that something else? Maybe that's something else, because it's the odd one out in size, isn't it? This for me is so much fun. Finding out what's there, what is new to the shop. Hopefully these items will be posted if they're still around on our Instagram and on our website for the Antique Guild in not too long. Oh yeah, this is definitely something else. I do not recall what it could be at all. But I'm excited just the same. Oh yes. This is one of the nicest pieces of enamel glass I had ever seen. Isn't that a knockout? Now, again, the style of this gold gilt and enameling on glass is very much in sort of the Art Nouveau taste, but I would say that it is similar to the, the porcelain lidded jar, that it is uh, Austrian or Bohemian, and uh, they were probably actually trying to capture Islamic shapes, or at least suggest them with uh, the way they've decorated and designed this. I just thought that was a knockout. You could imagine it on a desk or on a bedside table with a little spray of flowers coming out. Stunning, 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 stunning. So that is all that's in this, this box. There is another one. And if you guys enjoy this and want to see more, we can definitely open the next box over the next uh, day or so and show you what else uh, is coming. Cause I know from memory vaguely, there's some really nice things in there. So. Thanks to all of you who chimed in live. This is the first of the live broadcasts that I'm going to be doing as part of my um, solitary confinement, my doing time um, here in isolation. 
So thanks so much, guys. I've enjoyed it, and I hope you have too. Bye.